What's up, Slackers? We're uh, back at home now after Computex. It was a fun uh, time. If you didn't catch the live streams, uh, you can always review them. We're going to have to cut them up and kind of shorten them because there's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, they're pretty enjoyed, enjoyable except for the video. Next year, that's going to change quite a bit. So, um, But it was good to see like a live stream for once. That's pretty much the first time in history of the competition that anybody actually saw what was going on. So that's kind of what I wanted to, to pass through and then just so or show some uh, I don't know what we do on the G skill stage. So, but uh, the reason for this video is is uh, I keep on seeing this. So, I guess before E3, AMD held this event and they introduced the new 16 core uh, processor, the 3950X, uh, for $750, which is all cool and all. I mean, a 16 core for $750, um, but. I've also seen some of the liquid nitrogen stuff that went up, that went on. I don't see any screenshots. All I do, if you look at, uh, if you watch the note, basically we just saw scores. Um, the funny part is there's no validation done on them. Um, we don't know what clocks. Um, there's rumors of clocks and what they can do, but it seems like a lot of hype. Which I'm not big on hype. I'm about facts. You know, we'll get down to like what it really is. So if you. Uh, Watched the keynote and saw that they broke the record for R15, the 16 core. And that actually beat the Intel 9960. The funny part is, is that talking to a bunch of people that I know, a bunch of other pro overclockers that have actually played with the system, is that the AMD is really only hitting about maybe 535 or 5375, I think the record was. Um, if you look at any of the 9960Xs or the 9980Xs, they're hitting like anywhere from 5.6 all the way up to 5.9 to even 6 gig. 3D, sometimes 6.1. So it's quite a big clock difference. Um, but the real conversation is, I mean, I'm all for AMD coming in and hitting the market with another CPU because it's driving competition, which is always good for the consumer. And it gives me something else to bench, you know. But I wouldn't expect anything crazy for overclocking with these chips. So you keep on seeing maybe 5375 or whatever they're saying right now, but that's like, that's not that good to be honest. That's kind of reminds me of almost Broadwell days, which is pretty eh. So the other thing that I heard about it is the temperature. So the temperature they're running is anywhere from minus 150 C to could be about minus 180C. Now this is coming from uh, a buddy of mine that has benched these chips. And basically what he told me is that if it, or what temp you're running at, sometimes they cold bugs, sometimes they don't. And so I, we kind of think that it's chip dependent. So you have to go through chips that maybe like cold and maybe don't like cold. But anyways, but what my point is here is that if it takes minus 150 to minus 180C, to get 535 or 5375. Um, I wouldn't expect these to be actually a decent overclocker. So so what I was saying is uh, you have the 3950X, which is supposed to have anywhere from a 4.6 to 4.7 boost clock, which is, I've heard different things now, but of course we don't have any screenshots to verify what's going on, which is annoying because they're claiming records without screenshots, which is not cool. But anyway, so they, I've heard anywhere from 3.5 base clock to 3.6 to 4.6 boost to 4.7 boost, which could mean just one core, two cores. We don't really know because no one's really talked about it. So, uh, but it's, it's just kind of funny that it, there's just no way that these chips are gonna actually hit decent like clocks. I mean, the efficiency is obviously there. If it's at the smaller clock beating records based upon other clocks, it's it's not so bad, which is which is good. I, I give AMD props for that. But still, if you want to take the performance crown for a king, what about all the air and water users and those overclockers? Because, I mean, really, wouldn't you want free performance when you can get it? I mean, that's the whole point of overclocking. So, but the funny thing is, too, is there's some stuff going on about Geekbench where they keep on saying, oh, Geekbench blew the 9980X away, and then they it blew the 9960X. The funny part is with these people that they don't understand with Geekbench, it usually picks, they, they usually say, okay, it ran, it was only running at 4.5 or 4.7. Well, that bench, particular bench usually chooses whatever the um, 
basically what the CPU says. And a lot of the times with ES chips or new chips, like yeah, basically engineering samples. So for AMD and Intel, they both do it. Um, that's why you'll see in CPU-Z they say ES and stuff like that. Not always, but a lot of the time. But the thing is, is that's just what it identifies at. That doesn't mean that score is actually validated as only running at those those clocks, which is funny because I keep on seeing these rumors basically going off about, oh, AMD's are slaying the 9980X and the, and the 9960X. The truth is, is that when this chip is probably going to come, you're only going to see maybe like 4.1 to 4.2 on all cores. I mean, it, it's going to be hard to find a decent chip because even at what, five set or at that 5375, they were running volts at maybe like 1.6. So that's a lot of volts. Comparing to an Intel chip, even like a, I've had uh, many like 7960Xs, 7980X, and I've had chips where they could do five gate on all cores with like 1.18 volts. So I don't see AMD coming up with something that good. But don't get me wrong, I mean, to see them come back to a certain part, like and actually drive competition, that's pretty cool. All right, so the, the next thing I wanted to talk about is there's a lot of rumors out there from NVIDIA, right? So I, I read a couple articles saying about the new Super Edition, which from my standpoint is kind of a lame name, but I keep on hearing that they're gonna release a, an updated version of 2080 Ti. So maybe there'll be a 2080 Ti Super. I don't know where these rumors come from, but it's kind of funny because if you see in the same articles, they basically talk about how um, the yields are good and that, um, oh, it, it, I mean, they're selling a lot of chips, their yields are really good, they can actually bump up a card and maybe come up with something in between the Titan and the 2080 Ti. Um, that's completely wrong, actually. So from what I've heard is the yields from NVIDIA are actually really bad. So the other funny part is in the article, it states that it says, NVIDIA yields are really good, which is actually the opposite. So what that means is that there's likely not going to be a 2080 Ti Super Edition. Now, usually what manufacturers do, so if they have defects in their chips, they'll cut them down and make smaller chips. And that's where you usually get like smaller ones like maybe 2080 or 2060, stuff like that. So what I'm thinking they're likely going to do is instead of coming out with a 2080 Ti Super, is likely they're going to have a new edition that's basically between the 2080 and the 2080 Ti. And that would, that, I don't know, that's my call. I don't have any official announcement or anything. Nobody told me this. This is basically what I'm assuming is going to happen based upon what I know and all the BS rumors that are out there. Because I see all these rumors all the time and they're always too good to be true. Like Intel losing to AMD right now? I don't think so. That company is so big and has been a leader for 12 years. You don't think they're gonna come back with something? I don't know, time will see, but I don't know. That's enough for my rant. Um, stay tuned for a lot of cool stuff. I mean, I got so much hardware coming. We got a, a brand new Kingpin that Vince handed to me um, personally. We got some heaters for it. We got, and it, it, it's a good card too. So then I got my Dark. I gotta go through a couple 9980X XEs. I gotta test to make sure top clocks because we're gonna go for some records, right? Um, the only thing is, is I gotta wait for some juice. It's gonna take a, maybe about a week to maybe two weeks. I, I'm hoping next week. And then maybe we can do a live stream because uh, I think you guys would, would love to see some maybe early testing, maybe do some 9980XE testing with doing like some 3D and just kind of see how you go through the whole benchmarking with 3D in general. So the other thing is that I got going is ugh, this monstrosity. I don't know if you, you're, I, you really can't, this thing doesn't, it's not, it, this thing's just huge. I mean, but it does get my blood like flowing. I mean, this thing is so sexy. I mean, it's so expensive too, but uh, we're gonna be playing with this too. I'm waiting for some parts to come in, but uh, oh man, this is gonna be fun. Maybe doing like a single car record with this. That'd be dope. So, but we got a lot of things going. Um, also shirts, we got Bearded Hardware shirts. You go to beardedhardware.com. Bunch of people asking, I don't know why they don't know, but 
that's basically where it is. Helps support the channel. Helps me do more videos. I got an editor now, so I think we're gonna be pretty good. So, uh, I think that's it, but I guess slag on, brothers. Slag her out.